Thank you. Um, I can't remember anything anymore, so I had to write my thing down. I am from Socialist Alternative. We're a revolutionary socialist organization trying to form a workers' party. Um, and I stand before you today as the final nail of, is driven in the coffin of the illusion of the American dream. The lie that has been fed to workers for 241 years, that if we work hard, fly straight, and sacrifice, we too can join the exclusive crowd of the rich and powerful and live a life of luxury and ease. This falsehood, along with many others, has been ingrained in our head from a very young age to keep us subservient and submissive to the capitalist powers as they proceed to steal our labor, steal our resources, and steal our hope. If hard work and dedication truly paid off, more than 4% would be able to achieve this goal. People would not have to toil at two, three, or four jobs just so they can decide if they want to pay their rent, utilities, or for food, and can't even afford to dream of a college education. Workers would not be laid off after years of quality service to find themselves overqualified and overpriced to find new work. The capitalists have perfected the tools to keep us in this position. They control the message and the media that is complicit in delivering it. We are bombarded on the news with the idea that we need to fear a rising U.S. deficit and that the only way to avoid this catastrophe is to cut programs from those who are most needy while providing further benefits for those who already have everything. We are told that we must fire up the war machine to defend ourselves against the threat of ISIS and radical Islam. Therefore, poor young kids who are limited in their future options are sent to fight and die. Innocent civilians are slaughtered in steady bomb attacks which create a new generation of people that now have a reason to hate the United States. All the while, the military-industrial complex enriches itself. The media reinforces the idea that we need to build a wall to keep out rapists, criminals, and drug dealers, when actually we are sent sentencing to death victims fleeing the violence in countries created by our, our government's backing of ruthless leaders and damning trade deals that maximize the profits of corporations while devastating the lives of people. They create divides between the members of the working class by perpetuating the myth that the ills of the consumers are the result of the greed and laziness of state and union workers. In actuality, it is the massive profits accrued by corporations that cause costs to rise. Finally, they play on racist stereotypes to convince the uninformed that the percentage of black people living in poverty and the fact that policies like stop and frisk in New York tar target people of color by a rate of 9 to 1 are just a byproduct of genetics. If the administration has its way with net neutrality and net neutrality disappears, the ability to find the truth about all this misinformation will become nearly impossible. This past election illustrated to many that those who are supposed to defend and protect the workers are really just tools of the corporation, whose purpose is to maintain the flow of wealth to those at the top of the economic and power hierarchy. And now that Trump is their president, we are seeing the realization of the capitalist utopia. Regulations are being eliminated so that businesses can rape the environment and pad the pockets of Wall Street, creating a world that will be unlivable in the future and a caste system that will be enforced by increasing violence and despotism. Public lands are being given to private developers. Social programs are stripped away, are stripped to pave the way for future tax cuts for the wealthy. The courts have tipped to prevent any salvation. So at this point, the question becomes, who do we turn to to save us when we cannot rely on our elected officials, the courts, or industry? The answer is we turn to each other. We have started to, grow, to, go, to band together and grow. Only through the power of this united front can we fight the oligarchy of oppression that is formed amongst the corporation and is carried out by their elected Democratic and Republican allies to crush us. Hundreds of thousands have band together to fight for the rights of women, fight for the rights of people of color, fight for the rights of immigrants. In our state alone, demands are being made to raise the minimum wage, protect health care, stop gun violence, and pass, and pass the Community Safety Act. But this is just scratching the surface of what we need to accomplish. In this post-truth world, we, make, we need to make everyone realize the one fact that does matter. And that is that, as long as we live in a capitalist-controlled world, as long as we live in a world where profits matter more than people, we will never be free to live the lives we truly deserve. The reality is that the earth produces enough for everyone to prosper and thrive. But as long as we live in a world where eight people control as much, as the wealth, of the, much wealth as the bottom three and a half billion, we will always struggle to survive. So we can start by demanding the things that we think we can achieve at the moment. The few scraps that the capitalists will throw to us to placate the masses, and hopefully in their thoughts, make us go away. But we must not stop there. We must take control of the, the control of the resources away from the capitalists whose main goal in production is to make money. They inform decisions on maximizing profits by exploiting the consumers and workers and earn mil millions for their minimal efforts, while those that actually produce, transport, and sell goods struggle to survive. As long as there is a surplus of workers that will compete, the corporations will continue to lower wages and benefits. The only person in this equation that we do not need is the only one that's pr profiting, 
By eliminating him, we can create a world where the workers can unite and control their own lives. If all the corporations were eliminated and put in the hands of the people, we would no longer have to maximize profits. Industries could work together to produce what is needed. When people are no longer competing for a limited number of jobs, we can focus on educating all people instead of those that are lucky enough to win, a, win the lottery for a charter, or afford a private school, or to live in a district that does not have overcrowded classrooms, has abundant resources for students, and provides enriching opportunities. College can be a place to learn and grow for all instead of the privileged few that can afford to attend. We can then produce a much larger pool of great minds who can work with other groups that are not focused on being the first in innovation and thus having control of the profits, but instead people could work together and share ideas to invent things that are truly useful and at a much faster rate. We will create a world where the workers control the use of the resources so that we can sustain our planet and control the production and distribution of goods so we can ensure that we care for all people. We will create a democracy where the officials are truly accountable for the people. We will have a world in which we will not have to worry about war and crime because instead of competing to gain the resources to profit the corporations, we will be managing them for the benefit of all. We can put aside jealousy and greed that cause our differences because we will not have to push others down in order for ourselves to survive and succeed. We will live in a world where we work for the benefit of all instead of to enrich the few. When this finally happens, we will have achieved a true socialist alternative. Please join us as we push for this vision of a worker's utopia. If you'd like to visit, if you'd like to learn more, please visit our table. We have a public meeting next Saturday at Rochambeau Library. We have some comrades who are passing out literature. Thank you for your time. Thank you.